Hi, welcome to Tuts Plus. My name is Bob Flisser. What do you do when you're creating a pivot table and the data that you want to combine are coming from several different worksheets? Well, you're in luck if you're using the 2013 version of Excel. Excel 2013 has this great feature called the data model, and it allows you to create relationships kind of like the way you do in a database. If you want to follow along in this tutorial using one of your own files, that's great. Or if you want, from the Tuts Plus page where you're watching this tutorial, you could download a zip file that contains the Excel workbook that I have open on my screen. And you can see here it's called Pivot Consolidate. Down here on the bottom, you can see that there are three worksheets in this workbook. Let's take a quick look at them before we do anything. You see here we're on the customer info sheet and we have a field for order number and some general customer information. If we go to the order info sheet, we see we also have an order number field plus month product and whether the fruit is regular or organic. And then if we go here to the payment info sheet, see again we have the order number and now we have some payment information. So what we're going to do before we even create the pivot table is we want to convert each of these sheets into an actual table. So let's go back here to the customer info sheet. And I'm going to click somewhere in here, somewhere in the data area. And what I'll do is I'll go up here to the insert tab and third item over here on the ribbon bar table. I'm going to click that. So we insert a table. Of course, we're not actually inserting it. We're really converting it. And since I'm clicked inside this data area, the create table dialog box correctly guesses. Oh, yes, this is the data area you want. Yes, the table does have headers. If you're doing this and for whatever reason, this checkbox isn't checked, make sure you check it. Click OK. And now you see we have a table. If you want, click somewhere in here to deselect. Don't click out here. You want to make sure to click in here. And if you want, you can scroll up to see the top of the worksheet. Because it's a table, we have this nice striped formatting, and we have these filter buttons. But that's really not what we need. What we do need is, because we just converted to a table, you see Excel puts us into the Design tab. And once again, if we look over on the very far left side of the ribbon bar, we have the name of the table. So let's take that, just click there, and instead of table one, I'm going to call this customer underscore info. And I'll just press enter. Excel doesn't allow you to have spaces in the name of a table. So you could use either an underscore or a mixed case. Let's do that two more times. Go to the order info sheet. Click somewhere here in the data area. Insert table. Yes, it guesses correctly. Click OK. Click somewhere in here to deselect. And instead of table two, let's click that. And we'll call this order underscore info, press enter. And third time, go to the payment info sheet. Again, click somewhere in the data area, insert table, click OK. Click somewhere in here. By the way, you don't have to click in there. You could leave it selected. It doesn't really matter. And then I'll go and instead of table three, I'll call this payment underscore info. Okay, finally, we're ready to go and create the pivot table. So I'm over here on the payment info sheet. Again, make sure you're somewhere in this table. And pivot tables are also things that we insert. So we go back to the insert tab and there's a pivot table. And you want to make sure to click pivot table, not recommended pivot tables. By the way, recommended pivot tables are one of the best new features of Excel 2013, but that's not important right now. We'll click pivot table and it's gonna say, all right, select the table or range. Well, we're already there, that's great. We want to put the pivot table on a new worksheet. That's exactly what we want, but here's the key. Down over here, where it says add this data to the data model, click a checkbox in there, click OK. Now it creates this blank pivot table, and we have the task pane over here on the right, and it doesn't look too much different from a regular pivot table, except you see you have this section here active, and because we created it from the payment info sheet or table, we have payment info and we have the fields there, but you see over here it says all, click all, and check this out. Now we have the other tables that we created, but we can't use them yet because we have to go and relate these tables to each other. Also, just for clarity, instead of calling the sheet one, I'm just going to double click that and I'll call this pivot table. Just so we know what it is, maybe I'll just drag this over here. If you're familiar with setting up relations between tables in a relational database like Microsoft Access, this will be familiar to you. If not, that's okay. I'm going to explain it. When we looked at these three sheets, we saw that the first column in each one was the order number 
column, the order number field, that's where this comes into play. When we set up the relationships, we're going to say, all right, the payment info table is related to the customer info table where the order number is the same between each one. And the payment info table is going to be related to the order info table, also where the order number field is the same. There's no reason to relate the customer info table to the order info table because they're related implicitly through the payment info table. So here's how we go and set up those relationships. So again, we're on the pivot table sheet. I'm clicked somewhere in this blank pivot table. And we're over here in the analyze tab. Because we're clicked in the pivot table, we have the pivot table tools in these tabs. If you click somewhere outside it, those tabs go away. So just make sure you click somewhere inside the pivot table and that you're on the analyze tab. And over here, you see you have this button for relationships. Click that. And we have the manage relationships box. So we're going to create two relationships. First, click new. And this is, all right, well, what table do you want? So I'll click there and I'll choose payment info. And the column that I want is order number. And as I just showed you in the diagram, we're going to relate the payment info table to the order info table also at that order number column. Now, let's say the order number field was only in one of those sheets. It might still work if you don't have that order number column in the other sheets, but there's a greater chance for error. So it's just a lot better to have this. By the way, that order number is unique. So again, if you're familiar with databases, you might be familiar with the concept of a primary key. A primary key is a unique value that appears once in the table. If you think of something like a social security number, that's something that's going to be unique. So we are relating the payment info table to the order info table where they both have that order number. Click OK. And it shows up in here. We'll create the second one. So again, click New. And again, we'll say payment info at the order number field. We're going to relate that to the customer info table also at the order number. And again, click OK. And now we have the second relationship in there. So that's all you have to do here. And down here on bottom, click close. Now there's nothing visibly different here in this pivot table task pane, but if you had not created those relationships, then when you start dragging the fields into the pivot table, weird things would start to happen. So let's go and expand these. So you see each one of these tables has this little twirly arrow and you can click those to open them up. Now we don't have to use the order number in the pivot table. The order number filled its function it did its karma, and it's relating the tables. So let's go and put some other fields into the table. So from the customer info table, I'm going to go and take state, and I'm going to drag that into the rows section. Let's scroll down here. I also want to take month and drag month into rows, and you see what's happening there in the pivot table. And let's take product and drag product into columns. And what we're really interested in, let's go and twirl open payment info. What we're really interested in is the sale. That's the dollar value. So let's take that and drag that into sum of values. And also let's set up a filtering up here on top. And if you remember from each of these worksheets, we had a distinction is the customer, a new customer or an existing customer. That's what we called status. So here from the payment info table, let's take status and drag status into filters. So now we have a fully working pivot table and we can see each state, how each state did in each month with each product. And you can go and filter instead of all. Maybe we just want to see, let's say, existing customers and OK that. Or maybe we want to see only new customers and filter that. And now it works just like any old pivot table that you'll work with. So you can see that the new data model feature in Excel 2013 allows you to cherry pick different fields from different worksheets into the same pivot table. Just keep in mind that the rows of each table do have to be related to each other somehow, and you will have the best chance of success when those tables do have some common field like an order number. So I hope you enjoyed this and you found it helpful. Once again, for Tuts Plus, my name is Bob Flisser, and I'll see you at the next video.